So several people have been having trouble with homework um, numbers 6 and 15 from homework 2. So I thought I'd make a video going over both of those. So this is the first one. This is one example of what your homework 6 or number 6 might look like on homework 2. So you're being asked to find the average slope on the interval from x to x plus h. Notice this is an interval. So um, if we were to draw a picture, it would look something like this. x minus 3 would be look roughly like that. And it looks something like that, and you'd be, there's some x value here, and some other x plus h value here, and so you're finding the interval. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, the average slope on that interval. Of course, it's not the actual slope of the graph, but it's the, it's the, I missed my points there. It would be a line going through those two points it would represent the, so we're trying to find the slope of that line because that would represent the average slope on that interval. Notice it's not the exact slope of the curve because it's it's changing at every point. Um, so, and we left it as x and x plus h to leave it generic. So it could be any point. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this, the basically y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. That's just that basic slope formula. And of course, um, the x's would be x plus h minus x, because that's my two x values. And then on top, I'm going to put the y values that, cor that correspond to the x values. So that would just mean plugging x plus h into the function and plugging x into the function. So if I plug x plus h in the function, I get 1 over x plus h minus 3, because I'm just replacing the x with x plus h. And then minus, so that right there is my y1. Then my y2 is going to be the y coordinate that goes corresponds to x. But of course, x is just x, so that means this would just be 1 over x minus 3. So that's the initial setup of the problem. Then it just comes down to doing the right algebra to solve it. I mean, to simplify it, my, my bad. And so um, my first step I would notice is that this is 1 over x plus h minus 3. Minus one over, I can't really change that right now, but I am going to change the bottom. X minus X is zero, so I'll leave just an H on the bottom. And we have, we're left with a complex fraction that um, the best way to um, simplify a complex fraction is to multiply top and bottom by the um, common denominator. And there's, there's two fractions on the inside. So the common denominator would be X plus H minus three and X minus three. That's the common denominator, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by both of those. Now remember, when I say multiply the top, I'm, that means I'm multiplying both of these by that. And of course, that's just multiplied times that. So on the bottom, I'm going to have h times x plus h plus 3 times x. Oh, whoops, that should be minus 3, sorry. Minus 3 and x minus 3. Now on the top, I'm going to multiply this, so we're distributing this through. So I'm multiplying this whole thing by that, and the x plus h minus 3 will cancel out, leaving just x minus 3. So that would be what I get here. The minus, of course, is still there, and I'm going to put a parenthesis so that everything, so that we know that a minus applies to everything. So now we've multiplied this by the first term. Now we're going to multiply, again, this whole thing by the second term. This time the x minus 3s cancel out. I'm left with an x plus h minus 3. And then we do, again, do some quick simplifying. If I got an x minus an x, that's 0. A negative 3 minus a negative 3, that would be 0. So I'm really left with just negative h on top. Got an h on the bottom. Got an x plus h minus 3 times x minus 3. And now we see that there's an h on top and h on the bottom. h is a factor of the top. h is a factor of the bottom. So I can cancel them out, and I'll be left with a negative 1 over x plus h minus 3 times x minus 3. And that's what you'd put into that little box. Okay. So that's homework, um, homework 2, number 6. And the other one that a lot of people have been trouble, having trouble with is homework to question 15. So we'll take a look at this one. Um, 
So just first of all, just understanding the table, um, the first column is just x values or input values. The next two columns are output values based on the different functions. So what this first row is telling me that when I plug a one into the f function, I get out of two. And when I plug a one into the g function, I get out of three. So when we come to this third column, this is just telling you to evaluate f of g of x, which means, oh, at one, because it's in the one row. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna plug one into the g function. So we wanna know what g of one is. Of course, that is three. So then this g of one is replaced with three. So what we're really being asked to do is find the f of three. So I go down to three, look at the f column, and when I plug three into f, I get out three. So this right here would be three, okay? If we're doing it the other way, this says plug one to the f function. When I plug one to the f function, I get two. So then my next step is to evaluate g of two. Of course, g of two is one because there's the two row column and there, there's the two row and the g column. So that would be one. So this next one is saying you want to plug two now in as the initial input, right? So I'm putting two into the g function because that's where I plug it in first. You can see that right there, right? So I'm going to put a two in there and I want to know what g of two is. So I go down to g of two and that's one. So that means that this g of two is going to be replaced with one. So I'm really calculating f of one. Of course, f of one is two. So that would give me a two right there. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this. So this one says I'm plugging 2 into f first. So when I plug 2 into f, I get 5. So then I want to evaluate what g of 5 is. So I'm going down to 5, going over to g, and it looks like it's 2. So that would be 2. Okay. So that's the idea. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, part of the problem with this is just understanding the table because a lot of us are not used to looking at tables. So... Um, Give that a try on your side and let me know if you have any problems. All right.